Hello there and thanks so much for joining me for another tutorial. I'm Erin Eno and today we're going to be painting this fun green shamrock for St. Patrick's Day. If you do like this video please be sure to give it a thumbs up and also to see more tutorials like this please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get painting! Today I'm using my Baohong Academy cold press watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton, 140 pound. It's roughly five and a half, seven and a quarter ish around there. And I've got it taped to a board because we're going to be using a lot of water today. I've got um, my Royal Talons Van Gogh paints in my palette, jar of water and a paper towel. And I have three Curry's brand brushes in their 2500 series, one in a size uh, 12, 10 and 2 and I also have a facial tissue on hand because I'm going to be doing some blotting. I prefer these over paper towels because they don't have that funny kind of embossed pattern on them and also a pencil and eraser because we're going to sketch this out. So I just get my brushes out of the way. Now a shamrock has three leaves um, when I was looking at uh, reference images, I found out a lot about shamrocks and a four leaf clover is not a shamrock. Shamrocks only have three leaves. So I'm going to place my shamrock in the bottom right corner of this sheet and I'm just going to, I may have it just kind of run off the page a bit too. So I'm just going to start with the stem and kind of curve that up like so. And then there's three leaves as I said. So this will be the center of the first leaf and then we'll also have one come down this way and one come out this way. Okay so I've roughly broken it up into three equal parts and then each leaf is basically like a heart shape. So I'm just going to start at the tip of that line and just go up like so for the one half and up like so and down to finish that heart shape for the other part. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't stress about getting this perfect. So now we'll do the same thing to this side. And this one I said I may have it just run off the page a bit. just like that. This one could probably stand to be a little bit bigger. There we go and the same for the last leaf. Just up and around and down into that heart shape. Just like that. Now they're not all the same size. This one could probably be a little smaller. So hopefully you can see that. Okay and I'm just going to lighten the lines now and then we'll start painting this. Maybe this one can be a bit bigger. So I'm going to be using my number 12 because it's got a nice sharp point on it. If you don't have a large brush with a sharp point, just go down a size in your brush. And I'm just going to keep things simple and just do the leaf basically just out of sap green. I may add a little bit of blue into it. So I'm just going to get, actually I'll get some yellow on my palette as well. Just so it's ready for me. And then we'll get the blue. I'm going to use indigo, so I'll just put some of that in my palette. But for now we're just going to start with the sap green and I'm just going to paint the whole shamrock. And because this has a lot of curves in it, just turn your board when you need to. That is not cheating. So 
So I said that when I was looking at um, reference photos that I learned a little bit about shamrocks and the history behind it is that St. Patrick used the shamrock to demonstrate um, the representation of the Holy Trinity and since then it has kind of morphed into more of a generic um, representation of faith, hope and love which is nice as well. Okay so there's the first leaf and I'm just going to tap the excess water off my brush and go back into that sap green and just maybe tap some in some areas just to get a little shape so it's just not like a flat green maybe tap some in over there too okay just so it's got a little variation then we'll start the next leaf and don't stress over making it perfect okay and again I'm gonna go in with a little more uh, pigment you can see here that it's drying with a little bit of a hard edge but I'm okay with it we're not going for perfection. Just like that. Now I don't know if that's going to dry evenly, but I'm not too concerned. Oh, sorry, I forgot the stem. We do need a stem. Just going to make it a little thicker towards the bottom. That might be a little thicker than I wanted but it's all good yeah see I don't know if this is gonna dry all that smoothly so I'm just gonna soften it up a bit I should probably just leave it alone but there you go it's already done so now I want to add some veins to this just to make it not real realistic but just a little bit and also add some shape to it. So I'm just gonna go to my size two. And I'm just gonna tap the water off and go back into that green. And just with the very tip of my brush, I'm just going to do just the lightest veining in here. My brush is fairly dry. Okay, there's not a lot of water on it. Make it a little heavier down towards the center. And I will do this guy. That was a little dark. Just gonna tap that up a bit. And same thing, just with the slightest, slightest touch. Put some veins in there. Just like that. Again, a little heavy. Just 
just turn this. There we go. And while I've got the small brush out, I'm going to add more green just to one side of the stem. So it's a little bit of a shadow kind of thing, just to give it some shape. And I'm going to rinse and dry off my brush and just kind of soften that out a bit. I'm not really big on the edge here. It's gone a little wonky in some spots. So I'm just going to see if I can reactivate that green and then tap it up. Usually greens lift pretty well. So we'll see. Okay, that's a little better. And we're done our clover. And I'm going to go back in with my size 12. And I am going to do the background now. This should be dry enough that it won't be too much of an issue. And I want to have it kind of light on this side and get a little darker as we get towards the clover so the clover pops off the page a little bit. So I'm going to wet my whole background here. A wash brush would be better for this, but it's okay. It's not that big an area. And I think I'm going to start and go quite heavy with the pigment and then blot it up. That is the plan. And I'm just going to wet just around the clover. And you don't want to go on your clover because when you put the paint on, it's going to travel wherever it's wet. So if you get it on the clover, it's going to travel into the clover and we don't want that. I'm not going to go right into the small areas. I can bring that paint in with a smaller brush when we get to that part. Just like that. Now I'm just going to tilt my board, make sure I've got it wet everywhere. Some dry spots there. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so it's just got a nice sheen to it. Now we're just gonna go in and start plunking in some colors. For the background, I'm gonna put some yellow up here. And I'm just doing it kind of haphazardly. Because we are gonna go in with some greens as well and just kind of let this soften out and then we're going to tap it up with a Kleenex or tissue. Get some of the paints or some of the indigo in here. And we're going to get darker as I get closer to the clover, like I said, the shamrock. It's not a clover. I just finished saying that. Now we'll go in with some sap green and just pushing this around, letting it kind of mingle in with each other. A little bit of indigo. So I'm going to get my size eight brush, I think. See if this is a little better. And I'm taking most of the water off my brush. I'm going to put a little indigo in that green just to deepen it up a bit. And I'm going to come right up to the clover or the, the shamrock. I can't seem to be getting a, a lot of paint on my brush. There we go.
just carefully coming up to the edge. This is awkward because I'm trying not to dip my hand into the wet paint over here. I want it pretty dark where it goes right into the corner just like that and that should soften out with that wet background. I'm going to come right up to here. You just have to be careful here as long because you want to maintain that nice sharp edge that you have on your shamrock. I didn't do such a great job there. It's okay. I want that to soften out a bit, so I'm just rinsing my brush off. I'm just going to let that bleed out, just like that. It may become a little darker up to this edge. Okay, now we're going to do this section here and I think I'll keep this kind of light. So we'll do the yellow and the green and I'm going to rinse or just drag my bow. Oh. Accident. So I'm going to keep this section a little on the yellow side, but I'm still going to do the same thing. Go right, whoop, right in. I'm trying to figure the best angle to get in here. Probably this way. And be careful not to overlap onto the shamrock. Oh, you'll get these weird kind of layered edges. And I want to avoid that. We'll just bring that green out and it can fade out into the background because it's wet. And then here I'm just going to blend this out. Like so. There we go. So I'm going to leave that. But I will go back in and put some more pigment in here. Hopefully it's still wet enough that it's going to bleed a little bit. Some more green. And I'm going to go heavier here because I am going to blot it up like I said. So we can tap some more indigo in here just to get some darker areas. Go back with the sap green. Tap some of that in. And some yellow. I'm just gonna blend this out a bit. So I'm just trying to keep it moving so we don't get hard edges. Like so. Some more indigo. And I think that's good. 
So now I'm going to take my facial tissue and just kind of bunch it up. And I'm just going to lightly tap it just to soften out some of this background. So the colors are still coming through, but it's just a little bit softer. Just like that. We can always add to it if we feel like it's just kind of out of balance. So we're going to finish these other two areas here. And I'm just going to wet just close to the edge. like so and I'm going to go in with the sap green and I want to go whoops I want to go right into this inside space here and then just bring it out see how it's blooming out where it got wet so now we can carefully go up to the edge of the shamrock and because I put that water in there it's going to keep that soft edge And then we can just tap in some extra pigment just to make it a little darker, just so the shamrock kind of pops off the page a little bit. So there's contrast between that and the background. But I'm just being very careful. I'm going to put in some yellow here. Yellow up here. Then I'm going to take some sap green and just come up to this upper edge. I don't want it really dark so now I've just cleaned off my brush and I'm just going to drag this, soften it out and down towards the shamrock edge. See what I mean about that dark edge when you get it kind of layered? So I don't like that look. So I'm going to go in with a bit of indigo and that green, the sap green. And I'm just going to tap and kind of rework that edge a bit. Just so it's darker in the background and you don't kind of this kind of masks that hard edge, okay, by putting dark around it. I tap in some green, maybe just a little bit of straight indigo here. I don't want to make it look like I'm outlining the shamrock, but I want to kind of straighten that edge out, clean it up a bit. Other than that, I just want this to bleed out the way it wants to. Just like that. So we have one last edge to do, but I do want to tap some darker uh, green in there. So I'm taking the sap green and the indigo again. It's pretty dark this time. And I'm just going to tap in the very center here, very carefully, with my brush held almost straight up. Now I'm thinking this can be a little bit greener, but I just want to make it a little darker in here. Again, being careful, just using the very tip of my brush.
then I'm going to tip my board and just blend this out a little bit. And I want to go a little darker here. Oops, I went into the clover or shamrock too close. Okay, now I'm just going to clean off my brush and just wet this just to coax it out. Now I'm getting dangerously close to overworking this, so I'm just going to leave it because it's doing its thing. And I don't think that's green enough down here. I'm going to put a little bit more green in here. So now that I've got the background in, I'm thinking that the um, shamrock doesn't quite pop off the page enough. So I'm going to try to go in and just do another glazing layer of green over top of it just to make it a little, a little bit brighter or have a little more substance. I don't want to go too dark. Hopefully this won't ruin everything, but I just want to go just on top of it. Now, like I say, the green reactivates really quickly or really easily. So I have to just do this with the slightest touch, just like that. And I'm just going to do it carefully one section at a time, but I think that just makes it look a little bit brighter. There, that just kind of beefed up the shamrock a bit. I found it was just kind of getting a little lost in that background. So now we're going to let this dry and then I will take the tape off. So now let's have a peek at this. Um, you can do this as a card. And you know, put Happy St. Patrick's Day there. I was thinking I may, um, because of the three uh, leaves and what they represent, I may write in um, faith, hope, and love here, but you can just leave it as is and just admire your work for what it is. So there you go. There is your St. Patrick's Day shamrock. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it helpful. And of course, as always, if you're on Instagram and you give this a try, uh, post some pictures and tag me so I can have a look. That's it for today. Thanks so much for joining me and supporting my channel. Take care and I will see you next time.